Hello again, everybody. Welcome back to Airbus 320 Tech Talk. What do all those buttons do? Thank you again so much for joining me. Today, we're going to discuss the terrain on nav display push button on the A320 flight deck there. So uh, before we get started, uh, if you haven't done so already, please go ahead and hit the like button, the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. That kind of good stuff just helps me keep this channel moving forward and keep it fun, exciting, engaging, and all that kind of good stuff for everybody. So Let's go ahead and jump into the discussion for today. So let me bring up my slide here of the center section of the flight deck we've been working off of. So as I said, the, the button we're going to tackle today is the terrain on nav display. These buttons here, uh, there's one on each side, first of all, for you know the, the captain and the, and the first officer side of the aircraft. You can kind of you know toggle them on and off. And that's basically all that the switch is, is, is just that. It's a toggle. So you either want to see the, the terrain displayed or you don't want to see it. Um, one uh, part of the system uh, is uh, such that you can only display uh, either terrain or weather radar, you know, one piece of data at a time. So you can't actually have, you know, both the terrain being displayed and both the weather being painted on, on one nav display. Um, I think the reason the, the company designed it that way uh, is just so, you know, the, the screen would be extremely cluttered if you were, you know, trying to look at both of these different color codings and the kind of the, the depiction of, um, what you're being shown, it, it is obviously kind of similar. If you guys are familiar with, you know, what weather displays look like, you know, we'll, we'll talk about that at a later por point in time, of course. But um, obviously, it would, it would really clutter up the screen, so they, they only allow you to see one at a time. Um, and it's interesting, you know, the way the system is designed is that the um, terrain will override the radar. So uh, if you did have weather radar up and you did, you know, push the terrain on nav display push button to the on position, it would just, you know, take all the weather stuff off of your side and it would just show the, the terrain, um, as you might expect when you, when you turn the switch on there. So uh, another interesting thing about this is that the terrain uh, display will actually show up automatically if there's an EGIPWIS alert. So if you, you know, are getting too proximate to some time, kind of terrain, um, the system will just automatically show you what's around and show you what's rendering out there and, you know, hopefully uh, get you to steer clear of it. And, you know, this is, uh, you know, it, it, it kind of makes a lot of sense to me. And, you know, obviously the way they would design it this way, I think, is because, um, you know, they, they place a little bit higher priority on, on you smacking a mountain potentially uh, than running into some bad weather. So it makes a lot of sense. They designed it in the way that they did. And, uh, you know, along these two lines here, there's, uh, you know, kind of one of the common things that we'll end up doing, you know, we're flying around is if there is a situation where we want to be able to see both the, the weather that's occurring around us and also the terrain is we'll, we'll just kind of work as a team, you know, either the pilot flying or the pilot not flying will decide, you know, I'm going to keep my weather radar up on this side. If you don't mind keeping your terrain up and you can kind of, you know, cross check and just obviously have a, a picture of, you know, both of those those key elements that are happening outside the airplane whenever you're flying around, if you are in that type of situation where that's required. So just one little extra uh, thing to tell you about. And uh, also there is one peculiarity with this terrain display, which drives me and probably everybody else nuts that flies the Airbus, but I'll tell you about it. And it's just um, the the way that uh, the dimmer switch works for both the uh, the terrain display and the radar display. It's it's kind of frustrating. I'll show you what I mean. Let me bring up another slide here. We'll kind of take a look at the actual switch in the flight deck that, that actually regulates this. But you know, over here on the right side, in my case, you know, the captain has one of these as well. But you know, these knobs over here control, or, or one of these knobs specifically controls, you know, some of what we see on our nav display here. So if we zoom in real close, you'll notice there's actually uh, two individual knobs here. There's this little inner longer one here, and there's this outer, you know, collar, you know, fatter one on the outside. So the, the inner knob, um, all that controls is actually the, the brightness of the display as a whole. But this outside knob here, that actually controls the dimness of whatever you're looking at, either the weather radar or the, um, the nav uh, terrain data that you're trying to look at. And the reason why I say this drives me nuts is because they actually calibrated the, the brightnesses of both these two pieces of data to be slightly different. So <clears throat> a lot of times what happens um, is, you know, someone would be flying the airplane around at night, you know, before you come onto the airplane and um, you won't really notice the, the position of this, this knob here. Now, most of us, after a while, you, you kind of get in the habit of just always cranking the thing to the full right, you know, after you've done this a few times and screwed it up. But, you know, certainly there are instances where you forget it, but... Like I was starting to say, you know, you'll jump into an airplane where somebody was using the, the terrain function, you know, the last time they flew it. So they, they'll have this knob turned, you know, maybe to the, the halfway or 12 o'clock position or maybe a little bit lower because it kind of, it'll dim the terrain display 
uh, down to a level that's comfortable for them at night. Um, and so you, you take over the airplane, you go launching off and you fly off, you know, towards uh, an area of weather, let's say, and you got the weather radar up and, you know, you're, you're sitting there, you know, kind of fat, dumb and happy, you know, thinking, oh, you know, all I see is dark out here and I, we're, we're just fine. But, you know, then after a while you start to think to yourself, well, there's some big clouds out there and it seems like there should be, you know, something painting out there. And a lot of times you'll come back and, you know, this is the frustrating part, you know, you'll notice that the dimmer switch had been left down and you actually have to, you know, crank the switch, like mostly... I don't want to say all the way to the right, but you, get, you definitely got to crank it past, you know, the 12 o'clock position to get the weather radar to really, you know, show up, you know, pretty brightly to the point where uh, it's a little bit more uh, visible and seeable, let's say, even at night. So just one little, you know, kind of strange peculiarity I can tell you about uh, just actually flying the airplane. So with all that being said, uh, I figured I would uh, tell you just a little bit about what the symbology is and, you know, just, just a few pieces of data that I wanted to mention as far as you know what we actually look like when you when you bring the terrain display up on the screen here so as you can see here I mean this is just like a rendering of uh, what's happening you know outside the airplane you know in this case we're in the the arc mode here and um, we're kind of looking down obviously on you know our aircraft's position over the ground and you know that's one other thing too to make quickly or, or make quick mention of I mentioned it you know previously in one of the, the I think the video where we talked about the Egypt with system but just um, to remember that the terrain uh, data that you're actually seeing, it's not actually like a like a radar sweep kind of thing. It's actually just this, you know, the, the data that's loaded into the airplane's database and it just compares where you are, where your you know GPS or IRS position is and your altitude and all this kind of stuff. And just it just constantly renders and shows you what it's got in the database, you know, based on where you are. So uh, just if there's any conclusion about that. Um, one little intricate part of the system that I want to make mention of. But uh, like I said, this is pretty obvious here. I mean, you can see the area of terrain is depicted off to the left here in green. And, you know, you can also see yellow and red, which we'll kind of talk about in a second. I wish I was trying to find some better graphics that depicted that so I, sh I could show you what I mean, but wasn't able to easily do, do so. So anyways, you know, like I said, you know, the, the, the area of higher terrain is depicted by these, the, the green areas here. And then the, the flat land, so to speak, is just what's you know, showed up in uh, black here. And then, of course, the, the cyan color is where uh, water is being depicted on our flight. Uh, so let me, uh, I just wanted to bring up also one slide right out of the Airbus FCOM to, to kind of make a little bit of sense of these numbers here. And uh, this graphic is, is pretty busy and there's kind of a lot, you know, going on here. But I just want to point out just a, cute, a few key things um, first of all, you'll, you'll see an asterisk uh, on a couple places on this, this slide here. It, it just makes reference to um, with the, the gear being up or the gear being down, um, there is a, uh, a tolerance of either 250 feet or 500 feet. So they kind of, you know, they, they make the, um, the tolerance a little bit tighter with the gear down, assuming you're closer to the ground. This might be a little bit more important if you're maneuvering on an airport or you're trying to land or you're taking off or whatever. So just... One little key little point I wanted to, to point out in this graphic here. And, you know, the other one, too, is, you know, like I said, there's, there's a lot of numbers and a lot of, um, a lot of things they've, they've kind of depicted here. And, like, I'm always joking, too, if you've watched my videos for a while, you know how, how much I like to make fun of Airbus for, uh, you know, selling us a really expensive, nice airplane, but giving us, uh, you know, gray and white <laughs> graphics, essentially, in most of the, uh, the manuals they give us. But, anyways, like I said, all that I really want you to pull out of here is that, um, when you see um, on your screen, if you're looking at, um, you know, basically from the, the point where the, um, the color coding, coding goes from the, the high density green to the low density yellow here, that's, you know, basically the point where this the reference altitude, the air altitude of the aircraft uh, is, um, you know, going from the point of, you know, just being above the ground level or, you know, like we said here, you know, where the line meets, you know, gear up or gear down, you're either 250 feet above or 500 feet above the terrain that you're flying around. Um, and then as you go up, um, you know, the, the highest density yellow shows that your the terrain is a thousand feet above your flight or, or your flying altitude at this point in time. And the, the red shows that it's 2000 feet or more above your flying altitude at this point in time. So, you know, just kind of, the, you know, the most important uh, parts about, you know, comparing, you know, where we actually are in a 3D space and understanding that you know, as, as far as to like what we would actually be seeing on the screen there. So just, like I said, you know, you can pause the, the presentation here and take a look at this slide a little bit, a little bit longer if you need to, but um, those, are, those are kind of the main things there. 
And just to, to come back really quickly and point out, um, a lot of people ask this question here about, you know, the down here on the right-hand side of the screen, we see the two terrain numbers here. So this is just telling us, you know, this is the highest elevation that the system is rendering for us right now. And, the, and then the one below it is just the lowest elevation that's being rendered. So, you know, the, the lightest density green is at 6,500 feet and the, the most dense green is at 13,000 feet. So uh, pretty simple, straightforward. That's, that's all that stuff means there. So that's pretty much all I have to tell you guys about the uh, the terrain on or yeah the terrain on nav display button and just a little bit about the system itself. So um, we'll wrap it up with uh, just a quick Q and A. Um, I had a, a really good back and forth uh, with a viewer uh, earlier in the week, and he was asking a lot of aerodynamic questions. So some of the stuff we touched on um, in the last presentation had to do with uh, max speeds and all this kind of stuff. And one question kind of came about. Um, he was asking about the 250 knot. Um, speed limit as you go below 10,000 feet and there was a little bit of confusion on his mind um, as to far as like well, well what's that all about because in the course of our discussion you know, we were talking aerodynamics but um, it you know he, he threw that in there and it was a good point or a good question to kind of break it up and say hey you know we're talking about this speed limit you know the 250 knots below 10,000 feet which is the norm here in the United States and I think that's pretty much most areas of the world are probably operating um, with that speed limit in place. Now, basically the, the question that I'm answering here is, you know, what is that speed all about? Um, it's not an aerodynamic thing. It's not a structural thing, anything like that. Um, it's all about air traffic control. And what I mean is that, you know, when you're down at a lower altitude and, you know, most of the time you're near an airport, so you're either approaching it or you're departing the area, um, as you come into the airport, obviously there's a lot more dense traffic and there's just a lot more happening. So it's it's really, like I said, for air traffic control to just kind of slow everything down so they have more time and you know their jobs are a little bit easier to kind of work traffic around and sequence everybody and you know get them all where they need to be going. And you know the kind of analogy that I, I could tell you here is you know if you've ever know anything about shipping or you watch ships just come into a port, you know there's a lot of activity around the actual port and there's you know basically speed limits. Um, around you know these areas that the boats have to slow down and it just gives everybody a chance to maneuver around a little bit easier so they don't hit each other and uh, just allows for a more orderly uh, type of situation to occur around you know the the uh, departure and arrival points uh, in the system and it's the exact same thing with aircraft and, and aviation all that, and all that kind of stuff so uh, as with always, I hope you guys are having a great week out there. I really appreciate you tuning in. If you've got questions about anything, leave them down in the comment section. I'll do my best to answer them for you. So uh, have a wonderful night, and we'll talk to you again soon.